We talk football and current events Sitting and chatting with the very best guests We're two Scottish boys and we're loving death So if you like witty banter Check the former number one podcast on iTunes Sitting and chatting Hello and welcome back to the Sitting Chatting Podcast, I'm Liam White. I'm Jamie L. I'm Lauren McLachlan. Lauren, thanks for joining, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. No worries, even though you're meant to be working, but we'll ignore that we point That's right That's alright, <laughs> it's nice to take a break. No worries, are you working from home at the moment, or are you like, in the yeah. office, can I tell? Yeah, no, working from, working from home, been out the office while I was on furlough for like six months and then we're actually moving office so I need to go through and get my stuff and then take it back and I don't think we'll be working in the office till like next year so fun times well we'll get to work in a second anyway but start with you first start with everyone what's your earliest memory oh god um do you know what I have a really weird memory that's not actually true so this is a bit strange but I have this really vivid memory of like my house being on fire and like everyone rolling around <laughs> in the kitchen because apparently that's what you're meant to do if there's a fire like everyone's like rolling around on the floor and I spoke well, drop and roll like, well exactly yeah I, I said to my mom about this before and she's like Lauren that never happened so it was obviously a dream but I swear to god like that is literally the one thing that I remember from childhood that never actually happened so I mean, if that was true, that'd be a pretty interesting first memory, but what's your actual first memory then? Um, or at least what you think is the the earliest memory. Um, oh, that's such a difficult one. I'm terrible with my memory in general, but my mum was a childminder when I was little, so I was always surrounded by, like, well, that's how I made, like, quite a few of my friends. So I think, like, probably the earliest one is like banging on pots and pans like we've actually got a photo of me and my friend like in nappies probably like two and my mom would just give us like pots and pans and we would just like absolutely make a racket for the whole day so yeah forget toys pots and pans that's what you need to give for wins <laughs> exactly didn't give a shit about the toys just wanted pots and pans <laughs> yeah, fair enough i mean it's different i'll give you that <laughs> compared to what yeah <laughs> so, like, the first better though yeah, <laughs> True, yeah. But, you know, hundred yeah, uh, percent. I swear can't... to God, it happened, right? I think they're laughing. <laughs> Maybe you actually were in the house fire, but your parents just don't want to remind you about it. That's why they're telling you it's fake. Maybe a traumatic time, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Have you noticed any so strange nice. burns on any of their arms or anything like that? I mean, I've got a burn, or I had a burn on my arm from like the oven. I mean, it's up. <laughs> so I've an got an imaginary a... burn or a real one. <laughs> It was a real burn, although I have to say it's kind of gone now. So, like, yeah. Oh. So, you're actually going crazy, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> no, so you're saying there about your mum being a childminder. Was that, was it good then? Have Because obviously you had um, brothers growing up and other people in the house. Was that good, maybe, for you to be surrounded by all these different other people at the same time? Or did you not oh, enjoy it? Oh, I absolutely loved it. Yeah. So, like, I grew up with my brothers who were just like annoying but then my mum she child minded like people before me so there's probably like a bit of crossover but I won't remember because I was so young but then when I turned about two she started child minding one of my best friends Sally um who I actually knew from like five months old I think oh no sorry yeah Sally came about like five months old and then Eve came at two two years so I've known them for like basically my whole life for like 22 years so they're uh two of my longest friends and then they had well they've got brothers as well so then she child-minded them so the house is just like full of kids banging on pots and pans and the joys and was your dad at home at this time or did he have his own work as well no he traveled a lot so it was pretty much just my mum left with all the kids dealing with all the children that sounds like a exactly, job. Yeah. yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> Probably not a few years of her life. But. Did it? <laughs> so, like, <laughs> obviously your brothers are a wee bit older than you then, so did they, were they fed up with, obviously, like, loads of lanes running around the house constantly, or would you say that everyone kind of had fun with it at the same time? Do you know what? It sounds weird, but I don't really remember 
them as much. I think it's because when my mum was childminding, they were at school. Ah, right, and okay. So then when I went to school, but um, I definitely used to annoy my brothers when I was older. Like one of my memories was when my brother, my oldest brother, Matt, was about 18 at the time. So I must have been about like seven. Um, and he had he was a bit of like a ladies man so he, he always had like girls around at the weekends and I didn't really understand you know why they were why they were over and one coming out to play well oh. that's what I thought I was like oh yeah like a girl in the house like no more boys and the, the next morning this this girl was there so I like walked into the room and oh, no. throwing on my teddies at her and I was like play with me and Matt was like go away go away and I was like no no play with me and I think she was trying to be nice but mm. probably quite pissed off yeah traumatic experience I'm not even mm. sure what I'd be able to do in that situation or <laughs> something like that <laughs> was it just an innocent child I didn't really know what oh well, so it only happened once I don't think it's too bad then but if I hadn't <laughs> Uh, it was that a regular occurrence <laughs> yeah they usually like in the mornings they would like sit and make bracelets or do whatever I was doing <laughs> pair of lasses were just trying to escape and they were ambushed by the wee <laughs> sister in the hallway yeah, I know yeah we were trying to get out of the house before my mum saw them <laughs> no, that didn't work very well then did it yeah. like oh here's this like... nice stranger making bracelets with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know <laughs> To be fair, though, I mean, that's a good maybe excuse then for him to bring more folk around because if they were looking after you in the mornings afterwards, save your mum the job afterwards. So, you exactly, know. yeah. That's yeah. doing them a favour. Yeah, exactly. What a good brother. I know. <laughs> nah, so what was early life and early school like for you then? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Um. Yeah, I was like a really quiet kid though like I remember one of my friends telling me that sometimes I didn't even speak to her because I was so quiet that I just ignored her and I was like oh sorry about that. Um, Were you ever like mute as a kid or anything like that or was it just like when you start going to school that it became like that? Yeah just like in public places like see if I was just around my friends like out of school or like even sometimes in school I was really weird and just I don't know myself but yeah, like in public places and that, I was like super quiet, like to the point that it made it more awkward that I was that quiet. Yeah. Um, which is so, kind of strange because you're not like that at all now, which is, you, you really flipped it around as such. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you probably wouldn't recognise me if you'd seen me in primary school. I was like the complete opposite of what I'm like now. But um, yeah, no, I, I enjoyed primary school. High school was shit but this is kind of the same for everyone though isn't it so do you want to get into why was there one specific honestly just the same I was I was the weird sort of bit more quiet one and then I think by like sixth year I started to gain my confidence and I couldn't be arsed with like people in general and even when I was in sixth year I was still quite small and I swear to god I don't know what you guys think but every year that came after me just got taller and taller so like by the time that the first years were in they were like six foot so they'd be walking <laughs> behind me and we had like a different tie system and they'd be like oh move or like you know trying to push me and I'd turn around they'd see my six year tie and they'd be like oh sorry and I'm like oh my god you're a first year and you're telling me to like piss off I mean like for I mean, I don't know about you, Jamie, but I mean, to be honest, we're not exactly average height. <laughs> well, you're a bit taller than me, but um, it's one of those things that, like, yeah, when, you th- when you're seeing, like, everyone, like, that tall, you think, yeah, I'm going to be that height one day. And also I had a nice growth spurt early on, and I thought, yes, maybe <laughs> one of the tall ones, and there's a great form of our form class when, um, like, they do every year. There's one of me in like second year, and I'm like right at the back as one of the tall ones. And then I've got my final S6 like big portrait oh, yes. with the full school, and I'm right on the front row. It's like, this oh, yes. Um, yes. I, I think by the time I left, I was like the fifth shortest boy or something like that. So, yeah, it, it just I, hasn't I, happened. I had all the joy really. early on in life. <laughs> Good but things, that, packages. Yeah, no, um, except Liam. <laughs> oh. 
I don't remember. I don't even remember. See, going through the whole of high school, I don't remember changing at all. Really? Getting what, taller, like, or, height or <laughs> just editing? I just, I, mean, I think I just. Wrote, just I mean, your memory is pretty fucking mint for the best of times. Though, to be fair. <laughs> I well back that, but what I'm saying is, all the way through high school, I feel like I was just the exact same. All the way through. To just twelve till till then you just to be fair twelve Jamie till now like, okay. twelve till now Jamie, <laughs> to be fair out of everyone that I've ever met Jamie's probably changed the least since I first met him compared to now see I'm a real one I'm a real one yeah never change <laughs> no so like do you have then any positive memories of school at all is there like one thing that stands out in your head as being like that was a great time or that was a great moment or is it just all shit <laughs> I think my friend Izzy, um, so like Izzy was in primary school with me, she's one of my uh, best friends and like we always did like stupid stuff in primary school together and then in high school she's just, she does not care and uh, we had this teacher who, she was literally late every single morning and I think what made my mornings was just her different excuses as to why she was late, like she would just come in and they would just have like a complete argument because considering like Reggie you're meant to or I time or whatever you're meant to be doing like homework and stuff she would just come in and she would just be like sir I don't give a shit and she'd be like I'm just gonna be late you're gonna have to get used to it and they would just rant with each other every morning and honestly that just that made me do. <laughs> it's quite impressive being able to think of a new excuse every time to being late. Oh, there was just different stuff. I mean, she was usually chasing her dog down the street. She only lived literally like 30 seconds down the road. Yeah, so it's a classic like... get up a minute before school starts because you can get away with it or not. <laughs> exactly. Not and that's yeah. a good skill, though. Imagine that, that, like, living that close and being that late. I know. <laughs> that, yeah. that requires a skill. Yeah, oh, she's yeah, the best at that. No, so, like, so you're saying then pretty negative experience overall. It wasn't all negative. I loved, like, primary school was good. High school was, like, fine. I think I was just so, like, awkward and shy. And it was, like, so big. And um, I don't know, like, not that I got bullied, but a lot of people did kind of, like, pick on me and stuff. And I think I was just a bit of, like, a loner sometimes. So um, it sounds really sad, but I actually loved, like, my classes in sixth year. Um just because but, that's when you started growing more confidence or because that was the end of it? <laughs> kind of, because it was like coming to the end of it. and um, But I genuinely enjoyed like my actual classes and like a lot of my teachers were quite cool. Like um, in maths, my teacher would bring in like a Greg's for us every Wednesday because we had a double period in the morning. So she would start like, I know. We never would, got this special treatment, did we, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> no, not once. Oh, I was getting chucked out. She was just like the best. Like we had like eight people in the class. None of us passed, but like <laughs> this probably the Gregs is probably. Well, at least she got Gregs. Right? At least she got Gregs. Exactly. Yeah. You would have stayed all in your school, Jamie. If you got given that, <laughs> I'd, I'd have been there six year with that same teacher. You better believe it. Oh, it was the best. Nah. Oh, just stay on. Nah, we were we were nah. given that sort of high quality treatment throughout school. I'm trying to think of oh, it. I think if we ever got offered anything like that, I mean, maybe... I got offered a, I got offered a college spot in the third year. Don't take the fuck off. <laughs> I got, I got offered that. That was the only thing I got offered. Really, the time really, time really literally done your full application just to make sure you would leave. I, they done absolutely everything to make sure my qualifications were exact, everything like that. Uh, and then was like, right, um, so you either leave or uh, I need to kick you to school. No more. My school is my best. Yeah. Did you guys have like a favourite subject? Um, oh, I absolutely. I, I was sales too, though. I like obviously I like woodwork and and that. But oh yeah, the the actual so the, the best laugh I had was kind of maths. Whenever I ever done maths, but we just played cards. Yeah, maths. It was always like that. Like we just never did anything. No, nah. but I think. Your really? uh, uh, teacher had the, the group of stupids and we were on the one class and we just played cards. That was it. I can't even be bored teaching you. So <coughs> you couldn't. <laughs> Mr Clark, he's a real Oh, one. Mr Clark. Okay. Uh, what a guy. 
what a guy. Nah, I think mine was probably more studies, but again, it was just because <laughs> you ever meet Miss Coffee, Jamie? Who? Miss Coffee, the one with the turtlenecks always up to like here. Nah. Was she there when I was there? Yeah, she would have been. But like she was she was just spaced out or not the entire time. She would never she had no clue what was going on. And if like you're in our good books, then you're fine. Because every time me and um, like me, James and you and like my other two mates always just used to sit together. Whenever we went to class, we were like, Oh yeah, miss, we need to uh, get some computers. We um we need them for our task. So I yeah, on you go. Just let us wander around to the school looking for computers, <laughs> just sat down playing games the entire time. And she was like, Yeah, I can see you are making really good progress on your work, keep it up, sort of thing. <laughs> Great. Yeah, we were anything. Oh, I love doing stuff like that. Just like yeah. one day up being like, I can't find it. Yeah, actually, strangely, it was very much like college. Not in terms of a useless teacher, but what you were expected to do. It was very similar yeah. to that. Oh, I miss college. Well, <laughs> speaking of which, why did you... So, oh, we should have actually probably said, so you're from Helensborough originally, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah which, from what, like, what a village. I know. Oh, is. Which is on the, which on the, like, the far west coast of Scotland, yeah. Yeah, yeah, end of the Glasgow line. What's it like then for people that have never been there, I suppose? It's a lot different from when I lived there like my memory of Helensford as like a kid I mean not as like a kid but it was quite it used to be quite like grey and dull and stuff but now they've actually I know nice. people always think of it as like such a nice place I'm like is it though you've been there um but they've done it up now so it's like I actually got some nice restaurants but if I could like sum it up it's like restaurants pubs and charity shops that's Sounds like a great crack if you know you're and what? right to retire. <laughs> well, yeah, and then you've got the yeah you got the sea, which uh, I mean my brother like jumped in when he was drunk once, and uh, quite a lot of people do that, and you're probably going to get like some kind of disease if you jump in. So uh, nice, not even hypothermia, you'll get a disease if you jump. No, in no, not way. hypothermia. But, like people do the like New Year's dip and stuff, and I'm like, do you really want to be going in there? Um, mm. That grim, is it? Not that bad. It's, uh, I think when you get to like an older age, it's kind of, it's just the same old shit. Like people are going to the same pubs and like there's not really a club, but there's the pub called The Clyde, which is like the most famous or was, at least when I was there. So like you go in, they've got like the tables at the front and then at the back they had pool tables and stuff, which they moved on a, Friday and Saturday night, and then they had a bed at the back. A which, bed. <laughs> Are you sure yeah, it wasn't a brothel, by the way, this has been described? <laughs> well, to be honest, I'm not, I would not be surprised if it was. I mean, I think a lot of stuff got done. Oh, no. In <laughs> not in, just, not like, in the Clyde. It sounds like sort of shabby. I know. A place. <laughs> We're good spirited people. Says so it somewhere yes. I'd let my granddad go for a pint, and you're telling me it's a brothel. <laughs> terrifying but um yeah so what then made you because obviously for those that don't know me and Warren were also in college together that's how we know each other so what was it that made you decide to do media and sterling I suppose you know what like when it came to sixth year and they were like oh you know it's time to choose what you want to do I was I was trying to leave back in fourth year because I wanted to do like a baking apprenticeship and then I couldn't really make my mind up then I sort of failed a lot of stuff and uh, didn't get the results so I did sixth year and then they were like yeah okay it's time to choose and I was like oh I've got no idea what I want to do um so I don't really know what made me do media I did photography in fifth year and I kind of liked stuff like that and so I was like all right well that's like close <laughs> Like, yeah, exactly. Honestly, there was not much thought of like what I was going to do with my life. Um, and then I applied to two unis in Liverpool, one in uh, Belfast, one in Edinburgh, and then Stirling. <laughs> Basically, I got offered. I wonder one- which was the bottom of the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? <Surely> Edinburgh. 
<laughs> she'll hate him. It's a fair point. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I got like I got rejected from Edinburgh. I got I got offered Liverpool, and then they were like, "Yeah, so you need um, the A levels." And I was like, oh, "I can't do that because I'm in Scotland." And then they were like, "Oh well, not our fault." So I was like, "Wait, okay. really?" Turned, even though the nationals would have been the equivalent to an A level, they still said no. <laughs> they said no. So I was like, "Thanks, guys." Wow. And then, yeah, and I went to Belfast. So I was kind of like left with Sterling, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know much about Sterling. So my no one does. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like my friend uh, started studying a year before. I did, and when she said she was going to Sterling, I was like, "Is that not just a field?" I was like, "Oh dear, I even got anything in it." And then I went up this to visit her one. This is a city I will have, you know. Well, that's oh, what that I found out. That's a part of my house. I can't believe it. When I came here field. to visit, <laughs> honestly, I literally thought it was just field. I didn't know anything. So, like, see, before you came here, did you not like look it up or anything? No, so like when I went to visit Eve, that was in 2016 before I'd applied. And I was right. like, oh my God, there's actually like, it's actually a city. There's actually stuff. Well, that's been well, a bit generous. I yes. Yeah, I know. It's got two clubs. What are you talking about? Well, not anymore. <laughs> well, no, no one now, yeah. No, it's the same um, as any other shitty town in Scotland. <laughs> yeah. Well, Joe, we're still say, can you show? But yeah, it's still say. It was the. Uh, it was a capital, was it not? It was back uh, in the... That's literally the only reason why we were made a city. <laughs> no, we were not a capital. It was Perth. No, Stirling was as but well. Stirling, yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. Back. I think it's just back. Things I'd be making no. up. Yeah, um, way, Google way. Google it then. Yeah. <laughs> I will pick. Watch me. <laughs> we're going to preview your own. Nah, so like... So when you came through, was your mind more swaying then to be actually like, this wouldn't be too bad a place to go? Yeah, actually, I remember the day that I came up, we went shopping for, like, my prom dress, and that's when I was like, oh, my God, you actually got, like, a shopping centre. Like, I was honestly so surprised. I had no idea that Sterling had all of this. <laughs> so you uh, say you didn't get your prom dress from one of the charity shops back in Helensburgh? Shocking. You know, I saw some nice ones. But... Not supporting local business like that. <laughs> no, I know, right? So bad. <laughs> Sterling just had my heart. Of course. Um, but yeah, no, I realised it was like actually not too bad. And then, to, yeah, to be honest, when it came to applying and stuff and then getting back to me, I was literally kind of left with Sterling as my choice. So um, yeah, did the interview. And then I think I was like in the last group for interviews. There was like three other people on the day that I did mine. Um, and I confessed my love for Greg James to, I think it was Fee. Do you know Greg James? The yes, radio? the Radio 1 presenter, yeah. Yeah, or was it Gav? It was Fee or Gav, whoever interviewed me, I can't remember. It was someone. And uh, that was it. And then, yeah. Nice. It. So nice. then, obviously, just before you start, you move into Hall's, the wonderful Bain Street. Yeah. First ex- I'm not going to go into later on, but what was your first experience as like? <laughs> I was like so excited to move in and I remember coming in and I met um, Tash, Shannon um, and Anya, well Chloe at the time was there. The boys hadn't moved in. Little did I know that uh, turns out everyone thought I was going to be a bitch. (laughs) Um, Did, Did you know why? Did they explain why? They were like, you just walked in, you just looked like a bitch. And I was like, thanks, guys. Nice. And you're still friends now, so, you know, it shows still it wasn't friends. too bad. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Not, not, not too much of a bitch, clearly. Um, well, was, I was it sort of a shot going from that life in student halls compared to living at home, or did you find similarities in it? Do you mean, like, when I moved through from Helensburgh? Yeah, aye. Yeah, no, I, I preferred it a lot more because, like, I would say I'm, like, quite independent, so I was quite looking forward to just moving out and, like, moving in with friends as well, although it's kind of scary because you don't know who you're going to be living with. Yeah. I mean, it was a bit... <laughs> my flat was interesting. Um, but, yeah, no... I, I thought it was great fun. <laughs> oh, I mean, it, it, it was. It was, like... 
was true. great for me <laughs> because you know what? I'd go downstairs, I'd have a drink, it'd be lovely. And then, you know, if anything happened, it'd be like, right, guys, just I'm off to bed. Yeah. Just I'd, have, you to, to the I'd drama. have to deal with this. I, said, so <laughs> yeah. I get the best of both worlds in this scenario. Yeah. <laughs> you lived in, was it 4D? Nah, one, one C, C. Sorry. C. Yeah, one C. Yeah. One A. Yeah, no, I was, it was good. Met the girls and then Ben moved in. Um, oh no. Or was it Keelan? No, I think Ben moved in. Um, and then we knew that there was like one more guy. But Keelan took like, I think two weeks or something so we were actually trying to find out like who was moving in so we were really in- interested and poor Ben was left with four girls we were like asking our porter and everything and then I remember the day that Keelan moved in I remember the day that you moved in Liam because we were all looking out the window because we could hear a car and we saw this wee red Kia pull up and we were like <laughs> oh spice boy <laughs> <laughs> and, and you got what about me gave that assumed? away <laughs> I mean he walked out the car like, yeah, it's but, uh, the thing was as well, right? So in that entire block, of, I don't know if I told you this before, Jamie, but that entire black block of flats with I don't know how many students would have been there, forty maybe. Yeah. Only two of us drove, me and Mark, and we both had identical red Kia Picanos. Yeah. <laughs> no one else <laughs> drove. <laughs> we had space boys. Yeah, how dare you? <laughs> oh, it was the day that Mark drove. Were you at you were in the car, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, when he well, the incident with the funeral car, yeah. That was that was oh, a bad jump. Have oh, you heard no, about no. that, Jamie? No, I think no, we, I I, I, I think that's like we, just terrifying. I think we brought it up in the podcast before, but Oh, I did remember that. I did yeah, remember that actually. Yeah. Like. So for yeah. those that haven't heard, Mark is actually like a decent driver, there's nothing wrong with him, but he's just one pit he's just a guy that just doesn't care about driving. But anyway, one day very kindly offered to drive us in because I was usually the, the the taxi of the day. Um, drove us in. The first time he drove us in, we uh, then there's a big line of cars going by and there's a space. So we drove out and, well, uh, he drove out into like this big queue of cars and the guy behind us is honking his horn. He's swearing at us. And we're like, why is he so raging? And I can't remember, but one of us made the comment, God, could you imagine if this was a funeral procession? And I looked around the side, and it was a funeral procession. <laughs> we just drove straight to the centre of it, and his heart just absolutely what? sank. It was so awkward. Yeah. Did he pull then, over or that and let him go by? No. Well, no, he couldn't at that point, because so, oh, it, was, like, nah. it was a single road, so he just had to nah, stick nah, in nah. it. I'd have been up in the pavement with my hazards <laughs> on, like, on you go, my but, bad. Um, and then just to be <laughs> even worse, so then that was the first time we drove. The second time, the last ever time we drove this car, he drove into college, and then when he was leaving, they reversed it, pulled straight back into someone oh, and crashed yeah. it. <laughs> and then even worse, I thought I then crashed into his car because I didn't see this, but his but he was already at home, and I was I had to go and go somewhere. So I flung my car into the car park, not really looking, got out, jumped, was going to run upstairs, get changed and all that. But I stopped for a sec because I know something's different. I look at the bottom of his car and it's all like crushed at the front. I'm like, did I just did I just hit his car? And I'm like checking over my car and I'm phoning him like continuously like, have you crashed your car? Eventually he answered but I was panicking for ages. I hit his car. <laughs> and Mark never drove again. <laughs> Literally, that was it. He drove yeah, his car to sell it, and that was it. He's never <laughs> driven <was> since. <laughs> Poor Mark. He's so chilled out as well. And yeah, no, he, he is probably the most chilled person I've ever met until those two situations happened. And it all t- flipped on its head. Oh, God. Nah, so, go on then. You said Spice Boy at first, but what was your honest first opinion of me then? It doesn't matter. Like, whenever we first met, because I know, like, I was also good mates with Tasha first before I like became mates with you and Shannon. So, mm-hmm. what was your first opinion? Can yeah, no, as harsh as you want. I remember standing. We were actually went up to the uni one day, and it was to do like I think it was our logins and stuff. And I think we were in Cottrell. I don't know why this is such like a vivid memory, but like standing in the corridor and you were like across from me, um, and I remember thinking like, oh, that was a Spice Boy that like drove into the car park and then I was like you don't look as much of a spice boy here but I don't think I talked to you that day because like none of us knew each other but um 
Yeah, because Tash was getting lifts with you, wasn't she? And yeah, then- that's, that's the it- other embarrassing story, right? So <laughs> the first night, it's also like, I went for two days of college and then my granddad died. So I took two weeks off at that point um, because, well, obviously I needed the time off. Um, but when I came back, I was shitting it because I was like, I'm going to have new mates, basically. I'm going to be on my own. But thankfully, the night I came back, um, Duncan, my partner, was like, oh, come out with us. We're just going out for a few drinks. And by that point, Ben and Tasha were mates and him and Keelan were mates. So it was all good. We went out, we got absolutely fucking hammered. And um, then we were playing pool, play pool probably twice in my life before that. And then I can't remember, but it started off the first bet when we got really drunk, someone bet someone else to die. I think Ben bet Duncan to dye his hair pink, which he then subsequently did. And then I played Ben for going blonde and I lost on the eight ball, which I was gutted about. Um, so that then happened and then also I bet Tasha that if she won because I was like four balls ahead that I had gear lifts for like a week to college if she if she sunk it she bet me so that was the agreement <laughs> that's how it started and when we left every morning because obviously you saw it lived in the same flat together I just thought that she was ask. I just presumed that she was asking if you guys wanted a lift there as well just thinking that's what she would do but it turns out, because I didn't tell her to go and ask you guys, she was just getting all these free lifts. And then our mate Shannon basically thought that she was doing dirty favours for me in return. <laughs> <laughs> of these, like, free car rides. Because I wasn't asking yeah. them in the car. So I was like, no, no, this has to stop now. <laughs> right, everyone gets a lift. And then you were like, you actually been asking them? We were like, no. Yeah, to be fair, it was my own fault because I should have told her to go and ask you. I just thought naturally she was asking if you guys wanted the lift at the same time. But no, I felt awful after that as well because I was going like, I was thinking they're going to think I'm such a cunt for just every day picking up this just one person and driving off. <laughs> I must have looked like the biggest arsehole gone. Do you know that's what I miss most is like the morning trips to college. Just like I for- fucking did not hate them. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure you hated it, but like. Yeah, because I had to always get up and then go downstairs and wait for you three to get ready. And if it wasn't it Tasha, wasn't... then it was either you or Shannon. I'm always waiting for them at the game. It wasn't me. I was like... No, have... don't, don't bullshit here, because eventually you did well, move out, and we won't go into it why, but you eventually yeah. moved out and you moved across the road and then you came back, like, you used to give you lifts every day. There's many a times that you were late as well. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm just... I'm just round the corner, guys. We're sitting in the car, like that's a long corner. <laughs> okay, so not, yeah, no, I was I was late when I moved out, but it was like I would get in sometimes, like um, before I moved out, and I'd be like, right, Tash, you ready? She's like, yeah, and I'd like walk in the room. She's like still in bed or something. I'm like move, and then Shannon's like, I need to get my toes, and I was like, oh for fuck's sake, <laughs> yeah. Jamie, every morning I had to deal with shit. Every fucking morning. <laughs> every morning, yeah. I, like, and, and always, like, I think there was twice I was late the entire time, so I'm raging every single time as this is going on because we're just getting later <laughs> and later. And we'd always get to college and guaranteed one year's has an eating, so like the bells are already gone, we're meant to go off and all that, and you're, one year's is like, yeah, no, I need to go and grab a drink or yeah, I need to go and grab a, mm-hmm. a roll or something, wait for us. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh, these teachers are actually going to throw us out. <laughs> Shannon would, like, bring her toast on, like, a... Um, oh, yeah, on the kitchen roll every morning. Kitchen roll, yeah. yeah. I mean, fair play to her, it was generous of her to, you know, keep the car clean. That was important. Yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> Good time. Um, but, no, so... I mean, I think you're like me in the sense you really enjoyed college, didn't you? Yeah, I loved it. I just, I think, like... Because everyone, well, most people like got on really well. Like, and considering a lot of us lived together, it was like fun. Because then, you know, we would just like have parties in whoever's flat and then be in college, like hung over together. I suppose we just all of us did everything together. So, like, yeah, it was a bit weird going from, you know, never meeting these people to literally spending every day with you, I suppose. Yeah. And we had good, uh, lectures as well yeah that definitely helped um and then obviously you know second year happens and you know things get a bit harder and then the wonderful moving over to uni oh i know what was uni like for you then going 
Uh, yeah, uni was like different because we weren't, that's when we were like all like breaking up and we had to like go our separate ways. <laughs> Although we were in the same, we were in the same like classes, which is lucky, like documentary and stuff like that. Yeah, um, thankfully I was in classes at that time with pretty much you, Mark, most of them with Megan and, and like Kian. We thankfully had at least a smaller group compared to the original, but it was nice that we were all still together. Yeah, same like that. That kind of like helps a lot, at least having like a few of us in the same classes. But yeah, the workload, because do you remember we were meant to have like a boot camp week where it was like getting ready for uni? They were like, oh, yeah, like yeah. Week in college at the end will make you spend a week in uni doing it as you would in third year. And then that never happened. So our first proper week of uni was like we were just thrown in. Do you not remember that? Not really, no. I remember, like, I remember being completely fucking confused the entire, like, <laughs> yeah. well, the entire time, especially, but especially at the start, because, like, they tell you, right, go to, like, this room, and you're like, all right, great. And then, like, the, like, I don't know about you, but, like, see, when we were at high school, like, you used to get, like, a timetable. Yeah. And, like, the codes for the rooms were usually something like, you know, uh, 1.1 1. 1 or whatever so if I had a one at the start it meant it was on the ground floor and then you could work your mm -hmm. way out from there so that was an easy enough system for when you're going from primary to high school to be able to work out and then mm -hmm. I'm just looking at this like timetable I'm just like I have no idea where anything <laughs> is and it's all in such stupid fucking confusing shapes of buildings that you have no I idea know. where to get around. Path it wasn't as bad because it kind of goes like A, B, cd or something but it was cultural yeah but, oh yeah cultural goes up to z <laughs> and like yeah the, <laughs> so so it's just like, like cbda15 and you'd be yeah, like and, and you're just like I've, I've no fucking clue where i'm going to exactly. yeah, it's like but like i'm gonna be late sorry but nah i mean i mean i've been very vocal on this before about my hatred for university um but I don't know, I used to get the opinion that you certainly enjoyed that a bit more than me, but you never were truly happy as such. Yeah, I mean, like, I did enjoy it. I think documentary I really enjoyed. I think the second half, like, second semester, I enjoyed a bit less, like, of philosophy, just, I think philosophy was the one that just put me off. Um, didn't understand. Didn't half enjoy of... watching Tentacle Sex for your final oh, class ever. Point. Oh, dumplings as well. Oh, that was like... Dumplings, yeah. That was vile. Um, yeah, no, I think it was just like, I wasn't really understanding stuff. And then I remember me and you having like constant conversations about leaving and then... Yeah, well, because we were in the same classes, it helped because cause I used to drive up every day as well. I was just like, yeah, let's just go. And then just every single yeah. conversation in the car being back, like, right, I think I'm going to leave. And then you're like, yeah, I think I'm going to leave. leave. Yeah. When do we leave? Yeah. How do we leave? Is there a way to leave? How do we do it? Um, but I mean, we suck out third year. <laughs> yeah, we still, we got our degrees, so. Yeah, that's something. Would you go back? Do you ever think you'd finish it? Because obviously you have like what two more years to do it if you wanted to do it. Would you ever do it? I have thought about it, but I think like I know it's different when you get older. It's like oh, you don't need your friends there with you. But I think that's such a big thing because like I miss like uni life. But yeah. like I think fourth year, I don't know. I think it'd just be stressful now. Like I, I would. If someone said, like, oh, would you go back and do, like, college again? Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, if, if you guys were there, like, yeah, I would do it again. But finishing my course, I think I used to want to do it. But now I'm just, like, I'm, I'm over it. I'm like, there's other ways to learn. So, yeah, I think the trouble for me is now, if I couldn't have fun at uni being around my mates that I'd had at that point for three years, there's no way in hell me going back now that I'd enjoy it. And this is uh, this could sound a bit close minded, but that university in particular, in my opinion, people really did <laughs> really did come across quite poorly, in my opinion. Not necessarily teachers, but more the students came across quite cunty. 
quite full of themselves, quite, you know, mm, if yeah. you're no if you're no like competing at badminton world series fifty eight <sighs> and you so know annoying. you don't go to tingle every Tuesday with yes. your polo shirts on, then you know, you're not one of us. Oh. And I hated that. I hated that feeling of it. That is so because college could be anyone. Like, yeah. I mean, I would never really say there was much billionaire high school, Jamie. But obviously, like you know, if you change like your appearance or you look different, people like call you out, and make fun of you, sort of thing. But I'd say it was more done as banter. But in college, I mean, literally, like I dyed my hair like pure neon blonde, like twice. That because that day two other people shaved their heads, they were the ones that were getting talked about <laughs> more. It's just like you can be who you want to be and you're not really judged. Whereas I think uni was very much you're getting judged again, which I, I didn't think enjoy. It's it. Such like a sporty uni, like, yeah, like you're saying about tingle and stuff. Like, I remember all the hockey team would go out on a Wednesday, like, Foo Bar was like the well, I know they like sponsored and stuff like that, but they were like the place. For all the Jamie sport. was there every night with them. <laughs> yeah. You know, hockey team. Fuck okay. I don't know. It's just, yeah, like, if you didn't play a sport or something like that, like, you'd always see people on campus, like, in their workout gear and just, I don't know. Yeah, people always just seem to come across a lot more up themselves when we were at uni to me at least maybe I'm wrong maybe I've misread it but that's how I said I would agree with you yeah yeah like college like just nobody really gave a shit but then uni everyone was like oh what are you doing what's your best memory then from college oh college oh there's so many good ones I don't know um well you can say a few if you can't decide between one um Oh, I always think about when Graham threw the Snickers at my eye, like it hurt, but it's just one of the funniest memories. Um, I mean, like, <laughs> it was so bad as well, like, Jamie, she like, <laughs> while I was standing there, like, oh, throw me a Snickers, and Graham was like, all right, like, tomahawked it, but she, for some reason, had her arms like that, went straight, yeah. and just hit her right in the eye. <laughs> the worst thing was, he was literally across the table, he wasn't like, at the other end of the class or anything he was like he probably could have reached over the table and just handed it to me or like thrown it like that but he full force like pelted and it went under my eye and it left a bruise in the shape of a dick for like a week it was <laughs> actually weird. it was actually really strange when that <laughs> happened but it was quite funny and it was the day of our presentations it was like right before my presentations and I had like a bottle of like ice cold water like underneath my eye <laughs> Um, I mean, um, <laughs> my fee question is if, like, Graham's just assaulted you or something, <laughs> thinking, that he, thinking that he might have battled you just when you just out the room. I was like, no, he just threw a Snickers. Um, oh, that was funny. Oh, it's just, honestly, there was just so much that happened, like, every day. A film noir was good, actually. Like, that was, that was, like, that was quite fun. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed doing that. The London trip was good, although the London trip doesn't happen anymore because of our year. <laughs> Do you want to well, go into it? Uh, well, I mean, it's... Because I was at home and I was loving the Snapchats I was getting from all you, so I was just laughing my head off at it. I mean, we had, like, you know, it was it was educational and then there oh, was... Oh, yeah, like, very educational. It was very... <laughs> Yeah, very all those all those nights in the pub in the cinema. Yeah, that seems very educational. Yeah, yeah this like... is where your tax money's going, Jamie. I hope you're happy with us. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got like super drunk in the in the hostel. Oh no, it's because we we bought like a couple of bottles of wine from the like the tea store, or whatever it was, down the road. Drank them in our like room, well, downed them, and we were like, I don't know about them. I was absolutely steaming. And then we were like Fee and Gavin that were doing like karaoke. And then one of the lecturers was sort of hitting on someone. And that's someone that will remain nameless for the podcast. Yeah, well, for the we purposes, won't say their name. Yeah. <laughs> for the purpose of this podcast. And they were hitting on them too. And uh, as far as I'm aware, nothing actually happened, but it was very, very close. And the other lecturers found out so the next morning they were like a bit sort of pissy and we were like 
so hungover. I remember lying on a beanbag because we had like a six hour train to get back. And Fee was like, Lauren, sit up. And I was like, I cannot. I was like, <laughs> probably still drunk right now. And uh, it's that, that trip, uh, that trip doesn't happen anymore. So. <laughs> That, These are all so, terrible examples. It wasn't you us. Ruined it, it was, you ruined it for everyone. Because that, that lecture, it was so awkward when we got back to college as well because they had to keep like, passing each other. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> that was great because X person couldn't stop laughing every time it happened. So oh my God, yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. But I don't know. Like I just loved college and like the lectures and... What was the age difference? I know we can't kind of name names, but we can look at ages, surely. What age? It was probably like late twenties, early thirties. The teacher was. Oh, like oh no! I would say mid. Not? I I think we thought they were like late twenties, right? But I think he was actually mid thirties. Or and yeah. and boy, you're ready to mash up the place with shouldn't as well. <laughs> An ex, well. <laughs> an ex would have probably been 19 at the time. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, no, you're probably right. Yeah, because it's first year, so ex would have yeah. been... <laughs> I love it, I'm saying okay. ex. <laughs> ex, I know. I know, it's, a lot, it's not actually that bad. But hey, if we ever have them on the podcast, I'll ask them directly. And, well, then, and then I can see if I can cut out or not. <laughs> yeah. That's mad. God, I remember that. That seems like a different life now or something. But does it, does it make you feel like do you reckon like nowadays you'd be able to do that now? Like drink the amount you did then and all that? Oh my god, no. Like we used to I remember one night, um I think it was Halloween, me, Shannon and Tash were like, oh my god, probably the drunkest we've ever been. We were having to like trying to hold each other to get home. I think we got home at like six in the morning. Me and Shannon stuck on like chicken nuggets. And then I think we usually woke up for college about half seven. So we, we were eating chicken nuggets. We probably got like an hour of sleep and then went into college for nine. And I remember being in that class and like Shannon was like lying on the chair, like eating grapes just like this. And Fee was like, oh, are you guys hungover? And I was like, we are still drunk. But I was like, we were fine. We still made it in and made it through like seven and a half hours of college. But yeah, you do. You do remember that you used to be able to take days off literally if you were hungover. <laughs> that was the time. I miss those days. <laughs> Can't do that in work. No. <laughs> Although, I was thinking, do you imagine how great it would be if you were given like, like in college, you're given five days, any days that you could just take off and no explanation whatsoever. Oh yeah, it'd be. Yeah. You probably were drunk half the time, so. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, nah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how one I was able to afford it, but also two, I don't know how my body didn't actually cave in in itself because I we'd know. have college five days a week, and every day after college, I used to go to the pub immediately after. So I'd come home at like four, get changed, go downstairs, have a few drinks, then I'd go out, be out till like twelve or one, depending upon if I'm going to dusk or food bar, come home. Yeah. And- sleep until like half seven, get up, go to college. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I used to work like eight hours at Dolby's every weekend as well. So I'd be doing that as well. I don't know how I didn't actually just drop dead at that point. I know, it's like mad what your body can handle. Like, I don't know if you ever had my concoction, but like... Yes, I, I did. You, 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 fucked, oh yeah, you, probably you did. fucked me over badly. <laughs> I used to like, so say this like it was this glass I would fill probably about that much with vodka yeah that's probably about right and then yeah like, that's that's dilute that, and juice that, whatever that's how Duncan makes about all of his drinks as well so he just absolutely kills me anything yeah. that we were drinking together. I mean it was Tesco's vodka as well which is like paint thinner and I got to the point where I could not I couldn't taste it and I used to give it to you guys and you guys would take a sip and be like oh my god that is disgusting I'd be like it just tastes like juice it's fine Absolute freak. So my liver is in good health. <laughs> yeah. To be fair to you, though, during your time at college and university and onwards, you've kept yourself busy with other sort of side projects, I'd like to say, or other like causes, I suppose. Would you like to talk a wee bit about them? Yeah. I mean, one of my projects, I suppose, was for college, which was an imperfect society, which I still kind of do now. So that was like focused on, well, 
an imperfect society, like how society is meant to be viewed. And it's more particularly on like Instagram because everyone on Instagram is all like, oh, so perfect and tanned and I don't know, whatever. So I, um, my aim was to kind of like break that stigma by like, so I'll post photos of me like crying and like everything that goes wrong and stuff like that, um, which I still kind of keep up now every so often. So that's something that's, that I've kept uh, going, which has been good. Um, but now I've been the reality on Instagram. So that is. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I but like, good on you though, because like obviously 99.9% of the world would never do that and also like how you're describing yourself about being the shy kid when you're at school or day you'd been able to do that if it was if you're back then or sort of thing no probably not I mean I think it like I know you get those accounts now what they call like finsters where people post like stupid shit like a fake insta account where people like it's only really their close friends so I think a lot of people get confused and think that's what mine is, whether I'm just like, I mean, it's kind of the same, but... So it's basically just Snapchat, but like for a close group, because that what it is. Yeah, that's that's pretty, like a lot of people will post like when they're drunk and stuff, but their mind's more like, I suppose a lot of focus on like mental health and things like that. So, and when you're obviously in college and uni, that's quite like a big topic, so... Yeah, that's... Uh, no, good on you for sticking with it. It's a brave thing to do. Thanks. Um, I'm trying to think of what other, what other projects... Like Copper Feel, I was sort of thinking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Copper Feel. Um, so I'm still a part of that. So for anyone that doesn't know the Uniboob team, there's Uniboob teams across the whole of the UK. Like Copper Feel was started by a woman called Chris Helenga who got stage four breast cancer when she was 24 years old which is obviously really young so she started the uniboob teams so um we basically just fundraise to raise awareness um for young people about breast cancer because it's in well men and women and every other being on the planet can happen to so we basically have a giant boob mascot called barbara and We'll run with her my friend's just been doing bouncing so she's been bouncing on the trampoline for 12 hours and is wearing the mascot we do like really random random stuff so yeah I was the PR manager so I made like did the illustrations and stuff like that and we did all the fundraising and um talked about boobs a lot for the last four years to be honest brother boob <laughs> So uh, when someone sometimes when I say like boobs and stuff now, I'm just so like doesn't even phase me, and people are like, "Oh my god!" Some of the funniest things when we had the mascot out in uni, people would just walk past and be like, huh, "Nipple." <laughs> oh my, a mature breed. <laughs> I know. Right? Like some people would actually like walk away or like divert their attention and stuff, and I was like, "It's a it's no real boob." Aye. Yeah. <laughs> If their girlfriend's cats, so they might think they're chained. Who knows? No, exactly. <laughs> True, yeah. But now, like, I mean, because that stuff as well, you've done, like, talks in schools or you've done talks with school kids as well, haven't you? That must have been quite nerve-wracking, especially because you don't know how they're going to react at the time, I imagine. Yeah, we did, like, quite a few different talks and stuff like that at schools and the uni, and you never really know how people are going to take it, but I'm not going to lie, like, they were great, Um and they actually ask like a lot of questions sometimes people ask like sort of weird questions I can't think of an example but we would just be like "Mm, I can't answer that maybe leave that to like your parents but um we played boob ball as well which is like dodgeball but the balls I'm so gutted I missed out on those I was working for both of those I I so wanted to take part of that looks like such good fun that's me I never actually got to play but it looked like so much fun and like, yeah, I, I miss doing stuff like that, obviously, because of COVID. We can't really do that now. But, um, yeah, no, the team's still ongoing. We're still doing stuff. I've obviously just, like, my year has kind of taken a step back and we passed on to the other, yeah, the rest of the team now. So That's good. So are you still involved in any capacity or just not at all anymore? 
Yeah, no, still involved. I mean, I don't do any of their illustrations now, um, which is good because I don't think I would have the time for it. But um, still like part of the team. I'm just like a non-student member, although I'm teaching a yoga class for the Uni Vib team next week on Zoom. I'm still doing stuff at like that. Yeah, that was going to be my other thing. So, so you now <laughs> officially qualified as a yoga instructor? or Not yet. Right, okay. By March, so I'm currently studying to be, yeah, to be a yoga teacher. I've got a few assessments and stuff to do. There's so much learning, though. Um, half of it I don't really understand. <laughs> but uh, well, Learn, it takes time with everything. Yeah, true. Hopefully it will sink in. Um, but yeah, hopefully by March I'll be fully qualified so I can actually teach. So, yeah, I'm kind of teaching like a few things on Zoom at the moment, um, but just obviously have to like put a disclaimer and be like, if you hurt yourself, it's not my fault. <laughs> Please sign your life away. Yeah. So like, see for that then, how how long is the process of like applying to like from from knowing nothing to becoming like a teacher as such, how long would that take usually? It kind of depends on the person. So I've been doing yoga since I was like 14 years old now. I'm 22, so I can't do maths. Six, <laughs> Six. eight, <laughs> eight years, yeah. She's <laughs> good at maths. Yeah, See, so Master's eight. just playing cards. That's what it was. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just playing cards. It's, it's the Greg's. It's the Greg's fault. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so like eight, eight years now. So I've obviously like picked up quite a fair bit of knowledge and whatever, but then someone who's never done it before would have to take longer. So usually what you do is you'd go away for, say, like a month and you can get qualified. But I mean, when you go away for the month, it's like, intense so that's what one of my friends did and you you have to like sing all the hymns and yeah she was like pissing herself laughing I'm not kidding like sing sing the hymns and learn and do yoga like every single morning and night um obviously being a month that's quite like a short amount of time to be qualified for something um and there's other ones where you can go like (coughs) weekends but mine is blended learning so I do a lot of assessments from home and I just have to study by myself and then come February I'm going to be going in every second weekend uh, where I'll learn my practical stuff and then I take some theory assessments and then I do a practical assessment so I'll have to like teach the class which is my very last assessment and then if I pass that then I'll be qualified so in total I'm taking six months wow yeah so a big period of time well yeah, best of luck to you hopefully you pass thank you very much yeah, no, you see it as like a job afterwards or <clears throat> as a hobby yeah no I mean I'm hoping uh obviously like I'm working full-time at the moment but I'm hoping that eventually like that can become maybe more full-time and I want to get qualified in other things because I'm qualifying in HAPA but I really want to qualify in like kids yoga and um yeah, and loads of other styles as well. So nice. We'll Good luck. Okay. Hopefully it goes Thank well. You. No Thank you. Um so going back a wee bit, when you obviously when you left what university, you were a bit better than me. You had more of a plan. You actually went to Italy for a for was it three months in the end? Uh, yeah, I was away for about three months, yeah. So how did that come about and why, I suppose, is the main reason? Uh, so yeah, back in 2018, going way back, um, towards the end, I was like home for Christmas and I was at the pub as usual and I met some people, yeah, exactly, (laughs) met some people from a hostel and, um, I was like, oh cool, are you guys all traveling together? And they said, no, we just met each other in the hostel. So I was like, oh, how did you do, like like how are you here for so long some of them were there for like a month and a half I was like how are you affording this and they were saying that they worked and traveled at the same time so I think I just kind of wanted to like do something really random um with my life so I was like fuck it I'm gonna 
oh so I want to do so I went home on my laptop that night and started looking at websites and then started applying for places and yeah it was May last year that I went out I went to Budapest for three weeks and then went from there to Rome for the rest of the time and then came back home so it's a bit mad so what was your experience over there like oh it was amazing the day I remember the day that I went out I was absolutely terrified I was like what have I done why have I why have I like signed up to do this I was so scared because I'd never really traveled like alone before and I was like I'm fresh down traveling it's like for months months I was like good idea um but yeah Budapest was good it's quite like homely and the hostel um well it's quite scary the first night because my flight was delayed and I didn't get to Budapest till about one in the morning and then I had to get a bus to the city center full of like dodgy people and like my ticket wasn't working and then there was like loads of drunk people. So I was like, oh no. And then I had to meet the um, the guy from the hostel, which I was like, I'm meeting a random stranger at like half one, two in the morning. But he turned out to be really nice. Um, and luckily. Yeah, luckily, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was great. Just like you worked about four days, four or five days a week and then got like two days off. Um and luckily I met a girl two weeks in who was from Ireland. I was like really hungover one day and she came in and uh, yeah, she was Irish and obviously like Scottish and Irish got on really well. We became not really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Do you not like Irish? Not like Republic of Ireland. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Belfast, or, uh, that's absolutely fine. Republic, no. Yeah, we'll get it that though. That's a, that's a yeah. <laughs> It's, it's definitely a different. It's fine. Football sectarianism doesn't exist anymore. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're fine. No, no, it's fine. Um, so yeah, no, that was that was good. Um, seeing her, but the thing is, like the hostel in Budapest had like 15 guests and like four staff, and uh, and then I went to Rome and I was like, oh yeah, like how many guests? And they were like, oh about 430, and I was like. It's a bit of a jump. Bit of a jump, yeah. And the the staff was there was like sixty or something. Um, so what so, was your job then when you were there? Um, so it was the same in both places. So in Budapest, I was on reception and cleaning and events management. Oh my god, there was one day where I had to clean shit off the wall. Nice. Which was like really nice. Actual yeah. shit actual shit I was I just saw it and I was like I'm not like I'm literally not even being paid to do this I was like I'm volunteering to clean shit off a wall just left it oh I've never seen it sorry yeah I wish I had um that was the highlight of my trip uh yeah and then in Rome I was on reception as well and I ended up being a yoga teacher there nice so it was good yeah I can't believe it was like over a year ago it's gone by fast do you think you'll ever do something like that again yeah I would really like to have been looking up stuff but I think now it's kind of like well travel- obviously not at the moment yeah yeah um no I, I would absolutely love to do it again because you just meet like so many people and I don't know it's like a much much cheaper way to travel yeah so what was like the weirdest experience you had whilst working over there Weird, it's mm. I shit off the wall. Yeah, cool. <laughs> clean shit off the wall. I, was, I, was, I, I can't even believe that's not the first thing that you've said. Though. Yeah, that's, that's what I was seeing. Seeing if there is something more out there. Uh, there is a guy. So in Budapest, there there is like the the manager, and then there was a guy who mid forties maybe who was like living in the private room. So there was like two dorm rooms, and then there was like our staff room. We slept in the same room as the manager as well. So that's weird. That's um, kind of weird, yeah. But uh, at least you knew he wasn't taking all the money then. <laughs> well, yeah, true. <laughs> um, but there was a, a Hungarian guy who stayed in the private room. So he paid because he was like working in Budapest. So I suppose it just worked out cheaper for him to live there. I think they were kind of friends. And at first, I was like, 
I hadn't seen this guy yet. I just heard of him and I was living with the two other girls at the time. And then they were like, oh, I, I won't say his name, but they were like, oh yeah, this is guy. And like, it's great because he just like buys us wine and stuff like that. And I was like, what? And uh, he came back and this is the first so you've night. you've got a pimp for that. So you've got... <laughs> but I was like, he sounds like a sugar daddy. So he came back and he was like, food and see if it had been like, I don't know like if you think of like a gran or someone who's like trying to feed everyone it was like that kind of that's sweet but this is like a middle-aged man who was like here like wine and like food and at first I was like okay this is kind of like cool like getting free you know free drinks or whatever and then it just got weirder and he took us on so we went went to Lake Balaton um one day like the three of us and he he drove us there but like by this point, because when, uh, when Grace came, my friend, my Irish friend, I said to her, I was like, I haven't mentioned this to the other girls, but I was like, do you not think that guy is really weird? And she was like, oh my God, yes, he's so creepy. Like he would text me when I was like in my room being like, are you okay? Do you need paracetamol? Like I, like, in the, like really late at night and stuff. And I'd be like, what the fuck? It was That's so like hearing, like, man. No, yeah, yeah, it was he was like text me and I was like, why not just like wait till I'm out? But yeah, he took us uh to Lake Balaton one day. But the thing was it was like a three and a half hour drive away from Budapest. So we were like in the car with this guy who we barely knew for like the whole day and then it, we didn't get back till about midnight or something. And then the whole time in the car I was like, Oh my god, he's gonna kidnap us and uh he just got weirder and weirder and then when I left and went to Rome he started messaging as well and he was sending like a picture of a random guy in in the fridge in the hostel and I was like this is weird and then he started saying about like oh, something about sexy pictures or whatever and I was like no no I was like, this is just too weird it took his time though a bit strange he asked after you left and went to Rome he wasn't, I don't know what he was asking for. Like, I think there's a bit of a language barrier. I've got no idea what he was trying to like. <laughs> Thank I can't that's, remember. That's, I want sexy times. Uh, no, nah, he's just <laughs> yeah. speaking English, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I was just like. Need something no. else in my life. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Just a bit uh, of a That's about it. Um, just quickly really before we move on um, about the accommodation as well, because you mentioned that to me briefly. That was a bit of a nightmare, wasn't it, as well, when you lived over there? Oh, that was in Rome, yeah. Um, we had, there was like a really bad smell from the bathroom and it turns out there was like dead rats in the ceilings. They cut a huge hole and like all this rats and like stuff fell down and then oh, there was like the washing machine and stuff like that wouldn't, wouldn't work wouldn't open and uh the actual flat we were in like a basement flat and when I was trying to get on the wi-fi it was like slaughterhouse and I was like guys why is this called slaughterhouse (laughs) wi-fi they were like yeah it used to be a slaughterhouse and I was like (laughs) (laughs) and uh the front door not of the actual building but the front door to our uh flat one of the guys is like oh Lauren have you seen this and I was like no what and he, he shut the door and he just used like the palm of his hand and just went like this. And he was like, yeah, you can just open the door like that. You don't need a key. And I was like, oh, this makes me feel so safe, guys. Um, yeah, we had scorpions and everything in that flat. So. Yeah, I really found- selling that is a great place to live. Wow. Oh, it's great. I found the scorpion one morning and uh, didn't have time to try and like get it. Also freaked out. I didn't really know much about scorpions at this point anyway, so I walked into work and I was like, oh yeah, guys, and I sent a picture to the group chat and they, and everyone freaked out and everyone was like, did you catch it? And I was like, no. And then we lost it. And uh, yeah, Do you not know they're like poisonous? <laughs> no, I don't think I realised. So I was like, oh yeah, like it's just in the flat somewhere. And they were like, oh my God, Lauren. I was like, sauce. So yeah, we uh, lost it for a few days and then got it. <laughs> Nice. Only poisoned two people since, but it's fine. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> just yeah. all lying dead, currently in that <laughs> flat in room. Lost but, a few. Well, there's a slaughterhouse in it, so yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> Nothing to do with like people. It's just fucking rats and scorpions are killing everyone. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. Five star. Yeah. 
So to be fair, apart from that and some creepy individuals, it sounds like quite a good time. Yeah, no, I absolutely loved it. Despite like all that, it was. Um, it shows it, was... it must have been a great time. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I met some like amazing people and got to see and do some some great things. So yeah, definitely would recommend it to anyone. No, that's good. Well then, moving on a wee bit, I suppose. Um, so just wanted to talk about stuff that we've seen in the news, uh, just very briefly, and you know. Being the biggest story there is at the moment, I'll be honest, it's the only one that I had any interest in. Me and Jamie talked about a wee bit the last time we were on, but obviously the school meals debacle about whether yeah. if they'll be <laughs> extending it or not. And my favourite thing about all this was uh, seeing the other day, apparently there's like been 164,000 signatures signed for a Labour MP not to be sacked after she called one of the lasses in Parliament Tory scum because they didn't, wouldn't give it. It's like, fair play to her, you know, standing up. Yeah. But now, like, it's pretty shameful, isn't it? I know, it's, I know none of us will exactly praise it, but I still can't get my head around it, to be perfectly honest. In a first world country, especially like England... Yeah, all I have to say is, like, fuck the Tories, because, see, when I heard that, I was like, that is just... It's it's the people, like, I'm seeing online at the moment, it's the people that are, like, trying to show, like, how good they would be if they were in poverty. They were like, oh, well, if I was poor, this is how I would make my meals. Why can't you guys do it? And I was like, are you really, like, trying to compete to be like, oh, I would be a better poor person than you? I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, I mean, to be fair, if they're offering, I say let them try it, take away their money. Yeah. <laughs> what they do? Oh, absolutely. Sorry. Nah, it, it's I just, uh, it's just full of cunts, isn't it? Uh, just all of them, just and as well, oh. I, I fucking hate as well the people backing up by saying like, oh, there's there's nothing wrong, like, oh, you know, they can't afford it, like, you know, COVID's cost too much. It's like, is it fuck costing too much, like? Take away the MPs three grand that they now get an extra a year. You know, I'm sure that'll make the difference enough to pay for it, or maybe stop oh, high school do, you know, or do literally anything. Because you know, funnily enough, I would consider starving children quite up there in terms of the importance. They're kids, like whether or not, you know, it comes down to it, whether or not it's the parents' fault. The kids don't have a choice; like they can't feed. No. Themselves, so. Yeah, yeah, so do you want to explain how we're wrong about someone? I googled it and you said wrong. It was Perth was the first capital of Scotland. Then Dunfermline got temporary cap- uh, the capital. Then it was Edinburgh in the 1400s and it's been Edinburgh ever since. That's nah. for what I googled. We yeah. got told in uni, didn't we? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. uni's good for nothing. <laughs> 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 nah, I'm, I'm still. I, I googled that and honestly, I couldn't find it nowhere. Maybe it, it was, was when... a temporary. Maybe it was oh, yeah. Dun- Dunfermline got made temporary. Oh, it was Dunfermline. Which is a well, place we were doing place. the rat fuck stuff. Mm. Well, we'll find out soon enough anyway. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think at this point, if there's nothing to add, we'll get on to the game. The game? The game. Oh. Oh. Jamie, it's your time to shine, mate. Oh, I've been waiting. I know I feel this. Kidding on. You know what I will say is, right? It's very difficult over the... Yeah, because you don't have... Online, you don't, <laughs> yeah. right, there's, a, there's, a, there's a latency here. Uh, the, the game is called Hot Seat, yet yeah, they're still to sponsor us. We'll not talk about that. Uh, it does keep me up at night, but sponsorship <laughs> would be lovely. Um Fine, yeah, we're making that game. sweet Spotify money now. Ah, that's true. <laughs> the aim of the the aim of the game is um, Liam will give you a letter, um, or I, whoever's setting up the game, and with that letter, you then get topics such as toiletries, and say our letter was A. You've got to think of a word that is in the topic of toiletries, okay. beginning with A, right? Oh no. Yeah. Now. Is the idea is to get 10 correct and as fast as possible. Now, if you, you can skip if you're struggling, but it okay. does add to your time. As well as um, if you get five wrong, it's a DNF. 
Okay. We will be a bit more lenient as it's over Zoom, and um, mm. you know there is a lag or a delay, if you will. So yeah, just to so just to put out there as well. So ten questions in total, like Jamie said. But out of all, of, well, out of all our college friends that have competed, you know, Megan and Graham have both done it. Megan is the fastest out of our college friends at the moment with 105. Uh, it's a time of 105 and something, correct? So that's your aim to beat, I suppose. But, you know, okay. even if you want to beat some other pathetic times, you've got me on 115 and 8, correct? And you've got Jamie on 104 and 9, correct? So I well, was the best there. Yeah, you were the best, but you're also... Yes. What's that? You are... Uh, 35 seconds slower than you and who's the fastest if I, if I should have even went down that route it's embarrassing oh, my reaction time is so shit I'm going to be so bad at this well we'll find out won't we <laughs> yeah we'll see to be fair if by some miracle you're slower than Duncan's two minute time then that's just a problem oh. with I think. Okay. <laughs> think I can beat that Okay, so oh, remember if you, if you don't like the letter you can re-roll but you only can do it once so okay. the letter you have been given is A. Would you like to stick with A or would you like to re-roll? So is it toiletries? No, no. So like when when I so when I say three, two, one, go, you'll be given yeah. like different different categories, and you have to think about oh. what's beginning with that that matches. If okay. You um. Fuck it. Yeah, we'll go with A. Okay. So remember, you can say the same word twice if it fits. But anything more than that, I'm hitting pass if I think it's wrong, okay? Okay. Oh, no, I'm nervous. <laughs> That's fine, enough on us. <laughs> right, you ready? Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Things that get you fired. Arson. Yep, parts of the body. Achilles heel. Things you do at work. Oh god, accounting? Yep. Uh, things that are sticky. Oh fuck. Uh, Akai berries. <laughs> okay. Video games. Oh no. Um, you can skip if you don't know. Skip. Things you shout. Ah. School supplies. Yep. Things that are round. Apple? Diseases. Skip. Things you find in your pocket. Apple seeds. <laughs> right. That's that. Now. That's it done. That's it finished. So, do you think you have beaten either Megan or Graham? Wait, what did Megan and Graham get? Megan got 105 and some correct. Graham got 108 and 8 correct. No, I don't think. You know, Sarah, I think you're, I think you're right in the middle. I think so. Or you're just over. Or you're just over. Because I think the time was... Your time was actually good until you skipped twice. I know. That's the problem. Right. Anyway, one was some correct. You did it in one minute. Uh huh. Thirty three. No. Wait, so bear, it, bear in mind they both done it in person though. Yeah, aye, that's the main thing to take from it. Like yeah. the people below you both did it in person, but I'm sorry to say, oh Mark as well did also do it, but he did one twenty four. So, uh, also in person. Yeah, but you're the third slowest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, you weren't lying at least about your uh, about your uh, speed. But, uh, I did tell you I was bad, so you know. To be fair, on Discord, I think you can probably account for about five seconds in lag. So you know, take that into consideration. You know, well, you one go. like twenty eight probably. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it's still better. I tried. <laughs> But yeah, no. Um, if you ever feel like if you ever feel like me competing again at some point on this, then you're more than welcome to come on and try and beat it in person. Oh, absolutely, I will. But now, um, thanks for coming on, Lauren. I really appreciate it. 
Thank uh, you very much for having me. I've enjoyed it. Do you want to ask anything to us before we finish up? Mm. Well, it gives you guys the ick. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> 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 and I'll answer for Jamie it's last is asking him what gives him the act. <laughs> oh, it's not. Uh, yeah. Um find out by watching the previous episode, then you'll oh, find out what it is. Yeah. Oh, I need to finish it. No, nah, no, nah, you're not shitting it like that, get, Liam. get it told. Get it told. <laughs> No, nah, we actually couldn't think of anything. No, nah, you said uh, glasses went confidence and mine was uh, like those bull nose ring things. Oh, then, wait, like, having too much confidence? No, 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 no. no, no. I, I hate, no, I don't hate it, that's a strong word. I just, I, I don't like girls that have not got a lot of confidence. Oh, not got a lot of confidence. Do you, yeah. you know what, like, I, I don't know if guys, like, get the ick because I've never really heard of guys getting it but girls do because see when see when I saw it on Twitter and I was like the ick and at first I was like I was like yeah, what's I never that? heard that either before no I didn't know what it was but then when I started looking I was like oh I understand it I just didn't know what the name was for it because it's yeah. so hard to explain it's not like um I think probably in Scotland they'd probably be more getting the book I would have pro- probably said back in the day it probably would have been called that so the it's egg. Even... I think it's just something that does your nothing yeah I all yeah. that it's a better way but it's that. not like it's like one person might do it and it's not that bad but another person like it's so specific like you could be fine you could be like say dating someone and then just they do something randomly like I've seen yeah. them, like when they tie their shoes and they're suddenly just like oh no that's just like put me off right, there's some absolutely ridiculous ones yeah really like really we really like, really pressing the green light <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. to be fair, like you and me both sort of said, in like a in like a town place that hasn't got much traffic, then you didn't get it. But in like Glasgow city centre, it kind of has to be done. Otherwise, oh, you're God, never crossing. It? Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> Mace was more serious. I think I did the serious route. I said everybody was taking the piss, and I was gonna. Yeah, but I, I can't like, think of any trivial shit that actually puts me off a person. Like, so I can't think of, like, like, like I said, the nose ring thing, but apart from that, nothing else. Yeah. I, I just can't imagine being with somebody that's really shy and not confident in myself anymore. Yeah. I, I, I get what you mean. I think I would be the same. Like, see, if you were out with someone and they were, like, really unconfident, yeah, mm-hmm. that would make me feel, I'd be like, oh, no, I just feel weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well then. Well, <laughs> thanks for being that was tough. I can tell you that now girls get the act part too. <laughs> nah. No but problem. Nah, cheers for coming on, Lon. Really appreciate it. Hope you had a good time. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Best lunch no for you. Thank you. Yeah, and, enjoy uh, your work when you go back. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy, right. yeah. <laughs> now you actually have to do some proper work now. I know, right? I'll be but like, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, until next time then, I've been Liam White. I've been Jamie Allen. And I've been Laura McLaughlin. And we'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. We talk football and current events. Sitting and chatting with the very best guests. With two Scottish boys and we're loving death. So if you like witty banter, check the former number one podcast on iTunes. Sitting and chatting.